Um, I don't know if I'll say that anyone could win it all, um, but as far as we go, new day, new month, a new season, a new opportunity. Um, so I feel really good about the matchup, and uh, I feel like we've had really good energy the last two days of practice, so I think the, the players are embracing this new opportunity as well. Last time you guys faced Iowa State, you outscored them in the second half, held them to 27 points. Obviously, you hope to be able to build on that. What do you hope to take from that second half of that game? Um, we just played with more energy and effort, like literally at halftime. I, re I remember this distinctly. The kids had wrote some stuff on the board. They always do the things that we do well and, and you know, or poorly in the first half. And I just erased the board. And I said, I'm just going to help you guys out. It's your, it's your energy and your effort. It's really poor. So if you want a chance to win, then you come out and you play harder with more energy and more effort. And, uh, and then we'll have a shot. And, and to their credit, they did. I do not know why. Um, that, those things are controllables. I don't know why it takes, you know, me being, um, you know, smart Alec to them and the, for that to kick in, I really don't. Um, but that's okay, you know. Uh, if you look at the stats from that game, uh, we shot better from the field than we did than, the, than they did. We shot better um, from three point. They made four more threes than us. We got to the free throw line more. The difference was we lost by 12 and we missed 13 free throws in a, in a game. Um, so, you know, I think the the players are really encouraged by that because those are things that we can control. As a coach, how different is it going from the regular season where you know how many games you are, you know where, where you're playing, when you're playing, to tournament play where it's win or go home from this point forward as a coach? Um, for me, it's no different because I literally, um, and I know you guys are so glad this is my last, your last time talking to me so you don't have to hear me say this again, but I literally take things one day at a time. Like I really try to win each day because I don't take anything for granted. I just don't. I've had too many things that have happened to me in my life to take things for granted. Um, with the players, though, it's different. You know, I'm 45 years old. They're 19, 20, 21, 22. And so I think some of them, um, you see it. You know, you see it every, every year um, that I've been doing this. It doesn't hit them until it's that last game, and then all of a sudden everyone starts crying and, you know, one more game. I wish we had one more game. Well, you did today. You know, um, and so when it's over, it's over. And so that's what I've been imploring with them is to not take any any games, any plays off, possessions off, or any games for granted. I mean, look at, you know, Grayson Bright, for example. You know, her season is over. Um, no one was expecting that to happen. So for me, it's no different. But for the players, I think the reality is going to sink in for some of them. For the girls in general, what do you think a win would mean on the, in the opening round of the Big 12 tournament to kind of get some of the taste out of the season, out of their mouth, to, to something they can point to looking back as a, a positive step? I think it would be awesome. I think if we can win, you know, this first round game tomorrow, um, to me, you know, when you consider what they've gone through, um, it would be like, like winning the season, like I, I believe that. Um, and like I said, we had a great deal of energy the last two days in practice, and so th they're telling me by their energy that this means something to them. Fully realizing you like to take one day at a time, can I fast forward you to just a little, and can we get a preview of what your pregame speech might look like going into the tournament? Mm, that, uh, I can't give you that because I don't know it. Uh, that usually comes to me like, as I'm walking into the locker room or when I'm standing in front of them and looking at them or even as I'm writing on the board, that's where I kind of get inspired for that. Coach, you kind of mentioned it there before before the press conference started. You talked about Grayson uh, traveling with you guys, maybe a game-time decision. If she doesn't play, how can she help you guys? Because, I mean, she's an energy person. Just being there, can that help elevate the girls in the game? Yeah. Yeah, so I want to make sure that – I'm sorry if I confuse anyone. Her traveling was a game-time decision. We didn't even think she was going to travel until literally two hours ago. It was based on how she felt. Um, she was had a lot of nausea because of the anesthesia. Um, so she is not playing. She is out for the rest of the season because um, she has a concussion and the broken nose. Um, uh, but with that being said, I'm really happy that she's coming because – we, I miss her energy. I just love her positivity and the energy that she brings. And I think energy is contagious, especially positive energy. Um, so I'm just really excited that she's going to be on the bench. And I know you, he asked about what this would mean for the players. And I know it's all about the players. But for you in particular, 
what would it mean to finally see another win for these girls, you professionally as a coach, as a mentor to them? What would that mean to you uh, going into the Big 12 tournament? Um, what would mean more to me than, than the win? A win is just – it's just that. It's just an L or a W on a piece of paper. What I would like more than anything for, for these women – is to play hard tomorrow. Like, regardless of the outcome, I just want them to play hard and with heart and toughness and energy and passion. Um, that would mean everything to me um, because then that truly is a sign of progress for this program and, and the season that we've had. So, Coach, you've been obviously in charge for a couple of months now. When you look back, what, is, what have you learned the most from this team and from yourself over that time? Um, I've, I've learned some things that I thought I already knew. And, and the last couple months, it's just been kind of, um, a reinforcement. The biggest thing is that adversity, it, it does not, um, build your character. It really doesn't. It's, it reveals it. And, um, I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned a lot about other people. And uh, so I'm better now than I was two months ago. I, I've been saying that about the team, you know, but I, I, I have had a chance to, in a moment of silence this morning, to sit back and reflect as I'm going into, you know, this last weekend. And I am better. I'm a better person, a better coach, um, a better leader um, than I was two months ago. A lot of this talk about the energy and effort, the controllables. Who specifically have you been proud of seeing how they've developed into a leader on the court and off the court for the team? Um, I've spoken about her several times, but Jada Terry, um, she's still not. She's never going to be a vocal person, but she's more vocal. Um, she's been more consistent. Uh, Angel Hayden, um, to watch her grow. Wow. I mean, even today, we're in practice this morning, and um, she was, like, telling someone what to do. and Like, someone turned the ball over, and she said, go again, go again. And I looked at Dio and I said, okay, Miss Bossy over here, bossing people around. About time. I love it. Um, you know, uh, Grayson Bright, um, Brittany Brewer, really most of the underclassmen. I just feel like the underclass kids have really embraced this. They get it. Um, and that uh, those are the kids that I, I am the most excited about um, because I feel like those kids have really, really embraced this, this challenge and have, like myself, have gotten better. Thank <laughs> you.